If you're around data at all, you've likely heard someone talk about statistical significance. This hurdle is often considered the gold standard in a variety of disciplines for showing that something is true. A new drug being developed needs to show statistically significant efficacy to be considered viable. A new policy intervention is proved effective if it can, with statistical significance, promote a particular behavior. And a choice between different advertisements is made when one statistically significantly outperforms the other on some key metric like favorability. But even though statistical significance is a minimum requirement for any of those to be true, it fails to consider something else, meaningful significance. In other words, just because something is true doesn't mean it matters all that much. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and I'm on a mission to equip you with information you need to thrive in our data-rich world. In this episode, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to try and provide an intuitive framework for how to think about whether a result of some kind isn't just true, but also whether it's meaningful. To get us started, let's quickly think about what it means for something to be statistically significant. I cover this in depth in another video that I'll link to below, but as a quick refresher, if we're doing something like comparing two groups, we need to consider if a difference we observe is more likely to be due to chance or due to something else, like a vaccine with disease spread or curriculum changes with performance differences. If we see that a group of people who got vaccinated are showing less disease spread than a group that didn't get vaccinated, we need to know if that's because the vaccine is effective or just because of luck. Statistical significance is one approach we might take to make that determination. If we have enough data and enough confidence in our data, we can claim statistical significance and conclude that luck isn't what led to our results. That's all well and good, but at the end of the day, if I'm gonna be considering some kind of intervention like a vaccine, a policy change, or even a change in advertising strategy, I probably not only wanna know if something works, but also how much it works. For example, if I have a vaccine that reduces the risk of disease by 100%, that's probably worth investing in. On the other hand, if the vaccine only reduces the risk of a disease by only 1%, we might seriously need to consider if investing in the vaccine's manufacturing and distribution is worthwhile. After all, the money spent on manufacturing and distribution could instead be put towards further research to find a more effective vaccine. But what's critical is that a vaccine can be statistically significant in its effectiveness, even when it only reduces infection rates by 1%. Statistical significance and meaningful significance, or how much something actually matters, are two totally different things. Statistical significance is what tells us if we have enough data to conclude that some result isn't likely to be due to chance. So even that 1% reduction in infection rates could be true and come from a statistically significant result. What statistical significance doesn't tell us is how important that result is. One way to talk about importance is with what's called an effect size. I'm not going to get into the specifics of how to compute effect sizes across different statistical tests. Instead, what you should focus on is the fact that effect sizes are what tell us not whether some intervention works or not, but instead they tell us how impactful that intervention is. For example, in medicine, we often see things like our vaccine example, where the effect size is reported in percentage terms. We can compare a 10% reduction in infection rates to a 20% reduction and easily conclude that the latter is more effective. And that's even though in both cases, 10 and 20% could be statistically significant. The vaccine works in both cases, but how well it works is what differs. Critically, we can use those effect sizes to then make important trade-offs, like moving forward with the distribution of the vaccine we have, or instead going back to research and development. As another example, economics often has similar ways to describe effect sizes of policy interventions. Before we get into that, if you like what you're seeing, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. With that said, let's get back to statistical versus meaningful significance. So, in economics, for example, we might want to know if providing free college education will result in higher wages for workers. The idea being that if you get more people into college, they would then earn higher paying jobs than they would otherwise. In making that decision, we probably need to balance, among other things, the cost of making colleges free versus the benefit of increased wages and subsequently increased tax collection on those wages, which would, in part, pay for that free tuition. Well, that means it wouldn't be enough to say that free college tuition leads to a statistically significant increase in wages, but rather we need to know how much of an increase. If free college tuition increases wages for workers by, say, $100 a year, that's probably not worth the investment. On the other hand, if it increases it by 50000 a year, maybe it is. The point is that a policy intervention like free college tuition could have a statistically significant benefit, but could also be relatively meaningless. Even if that $100 increase is shown to be a statistically significant increase, we can likely see that the cost of implementing free college tuition is probably a bit too high if that's the entire return on such an investment. 
To be really clear, I'm not advocating for one position or the other on free college tuition. Rather, I'm suggesting that when we critically evaluate any policy decision like this one, we shouldn't just consider whether it will work, but also consider how much it will work. As a final example, let's say we're considering changing the way we teach math in primary school. We could design a simple experiment where we randomly assign some classrooms to this new approach we'll call Uncommon Core, and the other half to whatever the status quo is. At the end of the year, we test all the students on key mathematical concepts and see which approach yields higher scores. We might observe that under the status quo, students earn on average a score of 80%, and under the Uncommon Core, they earn a score of 81%. Moreover, if we have a lot of data, we might even observe that that difference is statistically significant. But hopefully you'll see right away that a 1% increase in proficiency, which is our effect size, might not be worth the investment in retraining all our teachers on how to teach math. The point, again, is that statistical significance asks the question of whether something works, but it doesn't tell us if that thing matters. Putting this all together, here's a framework for you to use when confronted with any kind of result rooted in a statistical analysis. This could be an analysis you write yourself, an academic paper you read, or just a news report talking about whatever the latest exciting scientific discovery is. To critically assess whatever you're dealing with, you need to ask two questions. First, you need to ask if what you're looking at is in fact statistically significant. This is what we call our necessary but not sufficient condition. To observe, say, a difference between two groups or a relationship between two variables, first and foremost, we need to be sure that that difference or relationship isn't likely to be due to chance. Statistical significance is one of our core ways of doing that. But then you need to stop and ask yourself a second question. Just because there's a statistically significant result, is that result meaningful? If a policy intervention is incredibly expensive and yields a tiny but reliably statistically significant result, is it worth it? If a drug reduces the risk of heart disease by some tiny and statistically significant amount, but costs hundreds of thousands of dollars per person to administer, is it worth it? Or if retraining all our teachers to teach math differently results in only small but statistically significant improvements in knowledge, is it worth it? The answers to all of these questions aren't necessarily obvious. But if all you relied on was whether the interventions were statistically significant, you'd miss out on the critical trade-offs that are needed to be determined if those policies should actually be implemented. We often get very hung up on statistical significance and completely ignore practical or meaningful significance. My hope is that by thinking about meaningful significance, you can be better equipped to judge for yourself whether a statistically significant result is worth getting excited about or should just be written off as an example of something that is true, but doesn't really matter. To be fair, I've glossed over a few topics like computing effect sizes, how to more intuitively make comparisons between different types of interventions using things like common language effect sizes, and why exactly you can have a statistically significant result with a tiny difference across groups. I did this so we can stick to the heart of the intuition you need to understand what meaningful versus statistical significance is. But if those are topics you find interesting and want to learn more about, please take a moment to comment below and I'll make sure to create content meant just for you, my viewers. Finally, if you like what you saw, please do take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and yes, click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content I put out. Thanks for watching.